It's kind of funny to say 6.2% growth is a 27-year low because that would sound spectacular to the United States or to Europe, but how worried, if at all, are you about those numbers? Well, the headline growth numbers uh, are not too low, as you said. Uh, it is a, a pretty high uh, rate of growth still for Chinese economy, which is already 11 trillion uh, U.S. dollars in terms of size, and also a middle-income economy. Um, but what I think uh, has concerned us and the market a little bit over the past uh, couple of years is the slowdown in some part of the economy, uh, and particularly the manufacturing business investment, uh, and partly result, as a result of the trade war and also policy of deleveraging, we have. Seen uh, manufacturing investment slowing for a number of years, and while there were some sign of a cyclical pickup in 2016 and 2017, uh, global trade policy uncertainty has, I think, uh, dampened that recovery quite a bit so far this year. So that's really. Um, uh, I think the area that would concern us and the market a little bit because it contributes so much productivity growth uh, for the Chinese economy and productivity growth for the median, for a middle income economy is still one of the most important growth drivers. You gotta remember, Julia, it's never about the number itself, it's more about the trend, and the trend is obviously towards slowing. Do you think that China's stimulus measures will reverse that and get the economy growing at a faster pace in quarters ahead? Well, we think that there are some uh, really favorable structural drivers uh, for the economy. So, for example, uh, the fact that the market is very large and companies are still very innovative, uh, they're still very keen to spend, to compete, uh, to upgrade their technology. And you have a very large consumer sector that's very willing to pay for new products coming to the market. So you have some very favorable structural factors, but you also have cyclical headwind. And I think that uh, it's really important for policymakers to clearly signal to the market that they are there to support growth, uh, support businesses, and be more open to businesses if necessary for, the next, for the, not only the next couple of quarters, the next couple of years. That's really important to uh, revive business confidence. And I think that that's totally doable, uh, and there is policy ammunition to do that. Uh, and if that happens, I think it could uh, reset growth uh, in the manufacturing sector onto a more healthier path. Do, do you think that the slowdown is the direct result of the trade fight and the tariffs, Julia, or is it more reflective of what is an aging Chinese demographic? They've got, they've got a demographic cliff coming. They've got an aging population. You can't be young or grow forever. Or is it really the trade fight? Well, I think that the economy is uh, going through some very big structural transition. And part of that is related to how the demographic is shifting. So you used to have a, a young uh, uh, and growing population. Now you have a shrinking workforce. But you do have better quality labor. So it's very important for the economy to also upgrade uh, the structure of the industry so that it can keep providing jobs to uh, better educated workers. So the structural transition has been underway for a number of years, and it's not an easy transition to make. Uh, there are headwinds along the way, and policymakers are also experimenting with a lot of other things on reform. So it's not an easy, uh, an easy process, and I think trade war probably has weighed, uh, weighed on business sentiment and uh, weighed on near-term demand. Uh, but I think that it is uh, a bigger and more longer-term structural transition that we're looking at, and that is, I think, uh, what the manufacturing sector is going through primarily.